day three of the uh, running extravaganza, jogging extravaganza. I wish I could uh, run rather than just be jog. I seem to plod along a bit. But I'll see whether today I'm going to be as exhausted as I was yesterday. I'm going to take another path today because I can. And we'll see whether that's a good uh, route to go. Right, it's a, it's a bridal way where people would ride their horses at one point and perhaps still do for all I know. Now, curiously, it's quite a fresh it's rainy looking morning. So let's cross over because I don't want to annoy people. I'm antisocial, especially when I'm running. Right, go for another sprint now. Uh, definitely more breathless than I was yesterday. That was bad enough. Perhaps it's a, a brisk walking day with very little running. I'm going to put that down as my warm-up face. <laughs> One thing you should avoid is fainting. Because you hit the ground rather hard. I've been there, done that. A famous bed mast calls me. Now I'm going to have a echocardiogram on Monday just to check out my heart. One has a, a leaky valve. It's not really a big deal when it comes down to it. At my age, you get leaky bits and pieces. Well, what do I do now? So when you get rid of the fat and get a bit more lean and speedier, so to speak, uh, you have less troubles. However, getting up to that point can, I suspect, cause a bit of breathlessness when you least expect it. So, once again, when people start telling you to, uh, you know, lose weight and get out and exercise, you, you fat freak, and uh, yeah, you got to do it in a in a careful fashion, and there's a good reason why you should. Oh, let's see if I, it's worth going down here. Workout paused. Oh, workout pause, dear miss. Workout Thank you. Right. This is banned for motorcycles. Now I might jog along here because the ground is quite soft, so you won't get the jerkiness that can damage your knees and ankles. can, of course, get lost around here. But here's a little uh, dog's walk, dog walker's uh, resting point. There's the mast. Uh, but uh, all these places, what is this? A hazelnut tree. Hazelnuts. Hazelnuts are what? 
acorns. Acorns, that's probably it. What do I know about flora and fauna and stuff? Zilch. Goodness me, one kilometre, ten minutes. Yeah. Anyway, these areas, uh, there were a lot of orchards around these areas. I don't know whether this would be part of it, or it's a leftover from one of the deer parks, or it's something or other. I don't think it's quite as wild as it uh, looks. It's probably a man-made or man-planted, or, or certainly uh, it's groomed by man. But it probably goes back thousands of years when local farmers uh, decided they would use it for something like a place where the deer could come, or rabbits would breed, or wild hogs. And it's just stayed here. All right, let's go for another run. So, Douglas Adams, who I met several years ago. Ah, is that a road? Yeah, we can go through here. He uh, was somewhat overweight, to say the least. You know, big guy got very famous very quickly, much to his horror. It did get him rather nice uh, and uh, high earning, high income wife, I believe she was a lawyer. He went to Hollywood where uh, he took to go to the gyms in uh, Santa Barbara. Now, I've been to Santa Barbara a few times and uh, I can assure you that if you go to a gym in Santa Barbara you have a lot of competition. Lots of very well pumped up guys there pounding on the machines lifting heavy weights posing looking good trying to attract the attention of the various producers and casting directors around because everybody wants a good looking film star Jim Keach uh, once said to me said who wants to make movies with ugly people <laughs> said so I was trying to uh, make a film about sumo, sumo wrestlers. He was, uh, it, he took an option on it. And of course, uh, he wanted to change it somewhat. Did they have to be fat? Did they have to be English? It was called Fat Englishman. Yes. My Hollywood moment. Did they have to be fat? Did they have to be English? Where he was there. Anyway, Douglas Adams uh, go to the gym there. Uh, and uh, needless to say, it killed him. Now, of all the places that should have had, uh, was it uh, defibrillation revival packs? I would have thought that would have been the place. Think of the insurance. Think of the lawsuits. And God knows what happened. But nope. It killed him. <laughs> Here we are, back at the White Horse. Oh, uh, that's a very short uh, circuit, that one. And that's the, the White Horse. It's been here for yunks. It's supposed to have, uh, have tunnels off to the, the nunnery that was once around here, though that's doubtful. Anyway, the vicarage there was built on the various ecclesiastical properties and uh, I say that's where Jack Straw roused the rabble during the uh, 
peasants revolt and that church there's been there since the Saxon times and it's bits of Norman, bits of Saxon, bits of medieval, bits of 18th century replenishment and they did a clean up job putting modern toilets in the 20th century It's not exactly uh, overflown with customers nowadays but you kind of got to keep these things, they're sort of his historical note of Henry V who actually set up a school here <clears throat> as one does Lots of interesting people were surrounding Henry V. I know we, we know of him as on core and all that stuff. But he was, uh, that's right, he was very keen on bridling to the whole place. There's, there was a uh, a local uh, monk stroke scholar that was there sort of Saint, became St John not St John of the Bible or anything like that but uh, he was one of these saints that uh, ran the abbey up there and there was monasteries and what have you and Henry V liked to go there and, but uh, the interesting thing is one of the guys that ran the place was the uh, the arch? Uh, was it uh, what would it, would it be called? Archbishop or bishop? I don't know whether they had the there was in the Catholic Church in those days. Anyway, he was the uh, the big boss man in Greenland. Yes, man who was uh, serving the Christian needs of the Viking settlers in Greenland. came back to run the, the abbey and uh, the, the monastery, whatever it would be called, the minster. So I'm not sure what uh, terminology was there. Anyway, the religious community of Bridlington. It's a little known fact, isn't it? And uh, Henry V was a long time before America was discovered. So one cannot help but feel that uh, people knew it existed anyway. They just didn't know how to get there without going the long way round. Through rather tortuous seas and uh, mixed with Vikings who were not always of a friendly disposition. And of course there would be stories coming back of altercations with the local natives who were they thought they were Chinese or a branch of China because they weren't sure but they knew it was something out there and people lived there but quite frankly at that time they had enough problems with the Welsh and one of the reasons why you see Henry V uh, viewed in profile is that He'd had a Welsh arrow stuck into his other side of his face, which nearly killed him, and left him with a rather unsightly dent in the face. A really bad scar. So he showed his good side in his uh, profile pic. Right, we're back. Let's see if my Kung Fu artist is. Oh no, she's locked me out! She has locked me out. Oh, I'm back. Yeah, I, I, the route I went didn't take long at all. So I thought, well, that's just as well. So I felt really exhausted. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I'm on my active rest.
40 seconds doing something and 20 seconds active rest. Yeah, could make a sandwich during that time, that's doing something. <laughs> <sighs> well, that was uh, basically a 25-minute run, which is probably just as well.